Oh, good. Oh, good. Perfect. Terrific work there. You stupid... You don't wait for me, cause I keep breathing fire. Welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons with me, a man who's genuinely amazed at how well we've done over sort of the second half slash third of the season. It's actually nuts. As always, of course, if you're enjoying the save up to this point, smash a like on the video. It really honestly does help out a massive amount. So today, I thought we'd start the page of a Leolandro, Leolandro, Lea, Leandro Crispin, um, Crespin rather, because... I, I honestly, I had my reservations about him at first uh, this season, and I think he has still cost us a few points perhaps here and there, but he's been so damn solid elsewhere. Like, absolutely brilliant at times. And I think his just general aerial ability has saved us more than one occasion. And he's got... Those decent physical attributes have been so damn important. Uh, decent technicals as well in the key areas, but nothing major. I have had him on defensive positioning training, and I think his positioning has gone up by one so far. So he is slowly getting there. And I really do think that if nothing else, Seged have got a hell of a player on their hands here who will probably earn them some decent wedge after we leave the club one day. Uh, I say one day, at the end of the season. But still, massively happy to see that. Don't forget as well, we have a youth intake coming up later in today's video too, so that's going to be exciting as hell. Might get the star of tomorrow. And speaking of the youth intake, your club probably has young players coming through that are out on loan somewhere in the lower leagues. And to keep track of all that, then the One Football app is is for you. Live score notifications and stats for all the games around Europe. Keep an eye on those players that your club has out on loan down in League 1 and League 2. Follow your favourite team and get team news quicker than anywhere else. And most importantly, never miss a goal throughout the whole of Euro 2020. Once again, a massive thank you to OneFootball for supporting and sponsoring this video. You can download the app for free with a link in the description. But really, we just need to jump in today. This is huge. We have a home game against the Bretzin. If we win this, we could go to 40. I remember I wanted 35 points. And after the way we started, it felt like a realistic target for us to try to really aim for. But we've just been so good. We actually have the second best goal difference in the league. It really does appear as though MTK are like nailed on. Title winners probably seven points clear. But anywhere from second downwards is genuinely up for grabs. Imagine if we could pull that off. We could there go there today. Depends. Unlikely though. But you never know. I still don't think we're as strong as Uj Pest though, or really Ferenc Varos for that matter. But honestly, looking at the rest of the league, Pushkas, we've got their number. We've already proven that we've got their number. I think, oh, I think fourth is definitely doable. So, slight changes right now. Let's just see. We've got some slight injuries and whatnot. I still don't really think Ben Salam is the guy I want to be playing here. What is his tackling like? Yeah, it's 10. I, I don't see why my assistant wants to put Ben Salam in as, as a ball winning midfielder when we've got Juricic in here, who is actually a very good ball winning midfielder. Davinsky's actually not performed that well lately, and neither has Mierveld. As much as he looks good in that role, I do wonder if he's actually the right man for the job. Maybe Bosic coming in here. And maybe Ben Salam back into his middle role in the midfield because he at least has put up some decent numbers. I'm still willing to, you know, Mirvel definitely needs a chance, but don't know if he's quite there yet. 11's not quite fully fit yet. It'd be nice to have him back as well. Maybe get Stahl onto the bench instead of Grosso. And let's make no mistakes. We were lucky in the last game against Honved. We probably lose that game most times we play it. To be honest, it, it makes sense. We, we were not that good. Uh, but having a player like Markovic in there that can score something out of basically nothing is so important, as you saw in that match. That being said, uh, defensively as well, we were all over the place at times, and the goalkeeper definitely bailed us out too. So were we to have a bit of a poor result here, I don't think we could really complain. It would sort of just be evening itself out. But I feel like we've got a chance. Helps the build-up massively to get other people in, but it also means that he is always an option as Bossic to the back post, and it's already a chance. Wow, that has to be a goal. Radovoj Bosic. Oh, dearie me. He turned into Radagast the Dark Wizard there. That was a bad effort. Ben Salam's ball in Van Dijk's header over the crossbar, but a really strong start from the lads. Bossic should have scored, though. I'm going to stop the Markovic loving just for now, but I wouldn't be surprised if he popped up with another goal today. We'll have to see. I'd like to think that he would do. If he can continue this form for the rest of the season, we might have a chance here. Oh, Pesty's through. You need to get a... Oh, I mean, that was so easy. Zolt Pesty makes it 1-0 to Debrechen, and we can hardly complain. Um, They've kind of just put the pressure on in the first few minutes here after a good start from us, and we just missed our tackles. It was a very easy goal for him. Uh, I think the fullback might be slightly at fault for this one. He's got a bit of an advantage, but it's a great first touch from Pesty. Defender can't get there. And yeah, I mean, Joe Walsh is not keeping that out. And it's 1-0 to Debrecen. Okay, should be won by Juricic again. Nice. This is better. Markovic dropping short. We got the run through the middle. Artiaga with the ball around the side for Kovacevic. It's a bit wide for him to be shooting, but he can pull this back across for someone like Artiaga. And it's a brilliant stop from the Debrecen goalkeeper. 
Should be easily won by Van Dyke, and it is. Kovacevic couldn't get to it, though. Ooh. Clipped through the middle. Surely he's offside. He's not. Yunus and Boumarzouk makes it 2-0 to Debrecen. Ah! Uh <laughs> <laughs> yep, it is literally as I said, it's the exact opposite of the last game. Uh, today, we've been the ones doing a lot of the, the groundwork and they've just scored two. They've got two chances and they've taken both of them. It's almost Markovic in reverse. Don't know what the defenders are doing. That's a lovely finish from Marzouk. Okay, we've got to pull something out here. Good stuff. Good defending. What on earth? Radovoj Bosic has been absolutely all over the place today. Uh, and I think that lack of match fitness, I'm going to regret. Oh my God, it's 3-0. <laughs> well, um... Karma, I suppose, for the last game. This is very much that. It's 3-0 to Debrecen after 35 minutes in what's been a very even match so far. I have no idea on earth what Bossage is doing there. It's a gorgeous little running behind again that just completely caught us out. And another great finish from Mazu. And it's 3-0. Oh, good. Oh, good. Perfect. Terrific work there. You stupid... Uh... 3-0 down but actually not playing too poorly overall from a creative standpoint. So he says like, you know what? I think we should make this much worse for ourselves. Marzouk round the side for Pessi and it could end up being four before half time. And it is somehow not four before half time, incredibly. I don't sense this game is going to get any better. And the other issue we've got is, oh my God. Great save from Joe Walsh. Wow. Everything that could have gone wrong in this game has gone wrong. Yeah, half time. Um, <laughs> I don't even have words for what that first half was. Mad. In front of 5.2k as well. Massive audience to see this absolute shit show. Starting to play those passes a bit quicker now. Markovic dropping short. Artiaga back for Markovic. Mierveld. Markovic. Here comes the play. Can we find an end product though? Artiaga. Oh, what a strike from Artiaga. And it's well saved by the goalkeeper, but Markovic can't get there. That was a bit more like it. Clear. And Mierveld might get this. He does. Finds Markovic. Drops it short. Artiaga. We've got runners now. One of them is Markovic. Round the side. It's Markovic. It's a tight angle. Though. He's never going to score from there. Oh. I mean, in the end, that's become a pretty shocking performance in general. Second half, we did actually improve quite a lot. Had a few little openings here and there. Unable to take them. But. After what happened in the last game, we can hardly complain about a bit of a weird one like this happening to us. Frustrating, nevertheless, because it is what it... But it is what it is, really. It, it's second nil, the Brett's in three. Fairly even game overall in the end, but yeah, we definitely improved as the half as the game went on. But when you're down to 10 men, there's very little we could really do. Had a couple of little openings. Oh, that's an annoying one. But hey, like I said, it is what it is. I'd have taken... I would have wanted three points at least from those two matches, and we've got them, I guess, just not in the way I expected. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't affect us too badly, though, as next up we have Ushpest. Right, we're back. We went away to Ushpest, and after 15 minutes, they played quite an interesting system that was similar to the Pushkas one. Stavitsky gets it, rolls it across, Markovic is there again with his seventh goal to give us the lead away at the team directly above us in the league. We then gave away a very silly penalty, uh, but... It, uh, it, th this one wasn't a pen. Uh, for sure. Oh, it was the next game. Sorry, my bad. Uh, anyway, uh, they then got themselves level. Then Ben Shad gets through here. Deflections all over the place. And it was 2-1 to Ushpest with just 15 minutes to go. And unfortunately, uh, it kind of got a bit worse from there. Loska flicked over the top. Uh, like a bit of a melee in here. And it's still a fantastic effort from Anovo. But wow, 3-1 to Ushpest. And in the end, it was very deserved. We didn't really do a lot after taking the lead. And it kind of suffered from that point. But nice to see Markovic once again putting it in the net. Next up, a really strong performance, actually, away at Budaos, but un unfortunately unable to grab ourselves the victory. Once again, another superb performance from Crespin with an eight on the night. Great defensive display, but just could not put the ball in the net in this game. I think we could have done with a bit better from Markovic, but hey, he's been good. Frustrating, but it is what it is. A good result away. Then it was at home against Farage Farage. Cissé gave away a penalty. It was never a penalty in a billion years, but it is what it is. Uh, and then on 25 minutes, Sam with the ball in. And there was Crespin again. 1-1. Massive result, this one. Uh, very, very hard fought. Didn't really deserve it, but we've had sort of swings and roundabouts in the last two games. A good point at home against Farage Farage. Keeps us in the hunt a little bit here. Sadly, though, Markovic was suspended for our next game against Pushkas, which is frustrating because we really, really could have done with him. Uh, Pruger scored an absolutely brilliant goal into the bottom corner, just out of nothing to give Pushkas the lead after 13 minutes. But the finishing was the key thing. We had chances like we always do against Pushkas, but we weren't able to take them today. Hassan then getting through to score Pushkas' second goal after 20 minutes. Their, their first two goals were their first two shots. It is what it is. Uh, but yeah, finishing really did cost us in this match. Artie gets to the edge of the box here for Jurisic. Kovacevic drops it nicely to Stavitsky, who gets us back into the match at 2-1 and I thought right we can start to grind through them at this point we then gave away another penalty Hassan dispatched it for 3-1 and that was all she wrote uh frustrating dead even game really strong performance from the lads but it just lacked the uh the finishing ability in this one Grecia just was not able to do what we needed him to do and uh yeah the chances were missed as you can see though their first three goals were their first three shots annoying but uh 
but we did what needed to be did against Mull. 1-0, Crespin's goal. That was all she wrote. And we needed that massively. Really strong performance from us, actually. Uh, defensively, extremely stable. Crespin, again, had to pop up with the heroic moment for us this time. Uh, Markovic was back, and he has sort of gone off the boil a tiny bit lately, but he's still the top scorer in the club, and he's only been here, like, two months. As we still, incredibly, after a five-match spell without a win, managed to sit fourth in the league. 43 points on the board right now. It's really looking like a three-horse race for that fourth spot between us, uh, Ferenc Varos, and Burroughs, who we've got good results against. We don't have to play them again this season. Best goal difference of the bunch. Uh, joint on the most wins as well. So, I mean, this is going to be a mad end of the season no matter what happens, particularly as today we play against current league leaders who've really been pegged back slightly here. But boy, did we miss um, Markovic during that pushcast game. Like, Th those are the games where you really need a striker. We also got offered the FC Rostov job interview this time, seventh in the Russian Premier League. So, oh, it's exciting to see what type of jobs we might get offered uh, when we leave in the summer because there's a lot of good, a lot of decent teams have really been in the market for us right now. Crespin as well is in conversation for player of the season, which is not what I would have predicted at the start. And now, youth intake. You should be seeing it on your screen right now. It was actually better than I expected. It, they didn't promise a lot in the youth intake this year, but we did get one player that's definitely worth talking about. And this is he. This is Attila Fulop. Now, ironically, that's the first time actually that their potential has been uh, assessed to be lower now. But it's a natural pressing forward, which is pretty surprising for us, really. Finishing is quite poor. Composure is quite poor. But he's still only 16 years old. Decent acceleration as well to go with that. Some okay physicals, again, for someone as young as 16. Bravery, very, very poor, which is not ideal for that role, quite simply. But great teamwork, great work rate. There's definitely a lot to like about Attila Fulop. And I wonder, with the right development, if he could be the guy. That makes our task today very, very simple against MTK. I and mean, really, it's just a case of try not to lose. Let's see what they want to do here. I've been kind of preferring my own uh, ideas now to my assistant. I slide Bossic here in the last game and I liked it. Uh, Mierveld, as much as he seems to suit it, I just don't really know if I like him there. Compared to... Oh, that's not what I meant to do at all. Third? No, don't do that. Swap the two over properly, Matt. There we go. Because uh, Ben Salam has actually done well lately. Now, admittedly, that's because of set-piece delivery, but nevertheless, someone has to deliver those balls. And, of course, Jurisic alongside him. I do feel a bit sorry for 11, but, I mean... Who do I really bring in? Eleven's had a poor run. So's Kovacevic. It's really hard to choose who gets to be in the team. I'm going to put Eleven on the bench, though. Just be in the fight for those final three games. I can't believe we're having to even say this, but we are very much in that battle for fourth place. It's incredible, really. That little run just before the Christmas break and just after the Christmas break, if you exclude that kind of the two defeats randomly in the middle, have really propelled us up the league. And due to the inconsistency of most teams outside the top two or three, it's allowed us to sort of have a, a surprising run towards towards the top of the lead that we wouldn't have expected to do. And as long as we're still in the conversation after this match, with those three matches left, we don't play anyone lower than eighth, uh, higher than eighth in the league, I don't think. And there's two home games in there as well. Oh, they're a bit outnumbered at the back post here. He could go through, in fact. Hamzic, don't foul him, please. Good save from Walsh. We've given away too many penalties this year. Um, too many of them as well have just never been penalties in a billion years. Some of them absolutely are stonewallers. But there's been too much of that kind of just complete nonsense penalties. In a helpful turn of events elsewhere, Farrench Varus are actually losing at home uh, to our other rival for that fourth spot, which would allow us to actually stay in fourth. Because it would mean that over those last three matches, we'd only have to match the records of the teams around us. Oh, God, good ball through and again cleared away by Crespin. But the pressure is huge at the moment from MTK. It's a good ball around the side again. Walsh is there. Go. Oh, wow. Oh, he's offside. He's offside. They've been all over us, really, for the first part of this. Oh, God. That does not help. Doing stuff like that does not help. They've deserved the lead. They've been the only team that's even combating anything. We've just been inconsistent lately. Um... Not put up that many good performances. We're decent against uh, Burroughs and decent against Mull, but I mean, I don't know how on earth this is... I, mm, that's honestly on Walsh. He should not be getting beaten at his near post there. That should be a simple catch for him. And now we've got a lot of work to do, and I just don't see us doing it. Not against this lot. They just look way too composed in these types of moments. And I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if this finish was 1-0 again, because it would be so typical of us to lose this, lose to them three times this season, 1-0 each time. Oh my God. Come on, lads. Come on, lads. Philip Stuparovic with a, just a straightforward ball through the middle. Oh, dear. Yeah, they've just not looked at the races today defensively. Just You can't be conceding off of ones like that, particularly when it doesn't even really go over the defenders. Well, actually, no, to be fair, it kind of does. We were a little bit too pushed up. It's a great finish from Stuparovic, but that's shocking from us there. Clip downfield. Markovic does win the header. Okay, good. First time we've really seen him do anything today. Artiaga. Cisse, run the stuff for Ben Salam. Oh, he's got to knock it further. Ah, oh, right now use that pass. There we go. Artiaga, we've got a body over here in Salam. We're just overcomplicating things at the moment. Bosic, can't get the shot away. Ben Salam with a great stop from the goalkeeper. 
Maybe we can get some set piece magic from Ben Salam again. Ball through Van Dyke's header. He does win the header, and we've scored a lot from set pieces this season, in fairness. Set piece play has been extremely fruitful from us this year, which is sort of makes up for how bad it's been over the last few seasons. Oh, it's straight. So, so, so easy. Oh, I suppose really what it comes down to is a question of expectations. These guys are clearly the best team in this league at the moment, and they're playing like it. Top of the league, everything kind of going their way. We're nearly promoted. And I think sometimes we've forgotten that because we've been doing so well over the past couple of months that we sometimes have to forget. We sometimes forget that we are actually a newly promoted side and sometimes we're going to play like one. And today is very much that day. Switched over to our secondary tactic for the second half. We're going to just try and go at them and see what can happen. Uh, throw some stuff at them right now because you never know. We pull off some magic, get a bit of luck and get a two-all draw or something. Then, hey, that could be the point that gets us fourth place. And honestly, I still don't think we're completely out of it, really. When you look at the league table, it's only one point between all three of us. And we've got three games that I believe we're capable of winning all three of them. I don't think we will or anything, but we definitely have the quality if we turn up to win all three of them. Walsh with the long ball downfield. Markovic might just be able to... Oh, he actually probably could have just turned on that, to be honest. Or he might get it anyway. Markovic is through. Oh, why? I don't know why he shoots there. He already has the advantage over the defender. And he could have just kept on running. Back post cross, perhaps. Ben Salem! And that is in. Samir Ben Salam gets us a goal back with 17 minutes to go. Great ball in. That's his first ever goal for the club as well. And how important could that be if it does set us away? Uh, as Pushkas grab a goal against Ushpest too, which bunches up the teams above us. Not that it matters right now, but it's a great pick out from Deutsch. Very, very borderline whether he's on side or not, but it doesn't matter because he's found the back of the net. And we've now got 17 minutes to go for this. Why not? Oh, here we go. 91st minute. Is there one last child? dear. Oh no, it's come to us. They only have one striker up at the moment. Okay, one last chance for us maybe to dig out something magical that could not save our season by any means, but show that we're still in with a fight of getting that fourth place. Juricic just needs the right pass here. Ben Salam, he's got it. None. The runners need to be made properly around him though. Around the side! George Nunn! Yes! Second one! MTK Budapest! No, you know what I mean. This, you know the score. You can see it on the screen and George Nunn has come up with a goal in the 92nd minute that could potentially be the difference between us getting fifth or sixth or fourth this season. I mean, it doesn't matter yet, but what a ball around the side from Artiaga. It's an incredible finish at the near post from George Nunn, and what a comeback from the lads. 2-2. Two -two. That's massive. Wow. I mean, as results go, when you need them most. Th <gasps> oh my god. Th that header could have been that was going in george nunn damn near scored twice in stoppage time to win this for us can we do something from the corner though ben salam's ball in nunn's header and it's over the bar again and that's surely gonna do it but my god we've came close to winning that in the end bloody hell george nunn's late i mean we pulled ourselves right back into that in the second half where they did nothing the ben salam goal and then george nunn we could have won that match in the end wow what a turnaround that would have been but still we take that wow what a result so that's how things look what happened late on oh of course we got the point didn't we so the point actually moves us back up into fourth place one point separates us and the two teams below us with a chance at fourth spot in the league wow okay tomorrow's gonna be tense man and our form really has not been good as of late just the one win uh since the honved game actually there's a few defeat i mean there's a defeat in the, to, yeah some defeats in there as well so it's basically what's really done our season really is from a sort of here from about there that that spell of games has just won our season over so we finish off with kishvada at home 11th place away at seventh place who we've beaten already this season and then at home against eighth place these are winnable matches for us we have a chance of four come on anyway if you've enjoyed this episode and i hope you have what a cracking end to it uh drop a like that'd be awesome if you're new to the channel subscribe to the twitch tuesday Thursday, saturday you know the drill I'll see you guys um tomorrow for the final three games of the season this is going to be mad imagine finishing in europe and then leaving <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.